And you right. lose the passion because you lose the why. Yeah. Oh, that's true. You there know, is. Um, so you the know, why. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> why? Why am know, I doing this? A, yeah. I mean, you can know what you're called to do. Um, you can know you have a call in your life. And if, if you don't establish the why, then disappointments will keep you from it. So. Things are, I mean, life is always <laughs> yeah. going to happen. No doubt. And you always have to go no back doubt. to, I know what God said at the beginning of the year. And there, I mean, that's why he says to walk it out. And that's where faith and trust come in in order yeah, to so walk through that process of what is he doing through this? Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Winning Conversations, the first winning conversation Woo. of 2024. Awesome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, my gosh. Year. Oh, my gosh. This is 2024. How to get here so fast? Yet we are here. That's crazy. With us is, a, I mean, could there be a better way to start 2024 than with Pastor Annette? Pastor Justin, how are so you today? series oh, regulars. It, we're doing amazing. Uh, we're excited about this year, and we believe God's going to do amazing things. Um, in all of our lives in 2024. So happy new year. And Andy's here with us. I am. Hi. Hi. How hey. was your new year? Great. Just oh. great. <laughs> Love it. All good Love things. it. <clears throat> well, this is a special episode because this is the first of what will be many first Friday episodes. So the first Friday, if we want to introduce this to everyone who's listening, the first Friday of every month, we just want to actually give this platform to our leadership. Rightfully so. It's, mm -hmm. This is we're so blessed to be in this house, but we will want to hear from this house, the yeah. leadership, the pastoral leadership, the the people that make this house what it is. Um, and they'll get a break from our faces, which is also nice. I've heard a lot now. of comments. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm sorry, <laughs> but I think we might, just start, so we might put your pictures behind us Aww. so we can see more cutouts. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to give them a break. You put know? Them all around. You know. Um, our goal, you know, but we want to give, again, this platform is, is we're so blessed to have it, but we, more importantly, we just want to take the first part of every month to really let people hear from your guys' hearts yeah. about the things that are on your heart, the things that are moving in your life, what we're praying through, the, like the more of the, I guess the, I don't want to say corporate because I hate to put it to that level. It's just what's going on with the leadership yeah. personally. And that, mm -hmm. that's Makes what sense. this series is starting as. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, with, with that and just being first Fridays, um, there's something that Jesus, um, we see him do in, in Mark chapter 6, and said he was looking out at a um, sea full of people, so to speak, and he recognized they were a sheep without a shepherd. And it's amazing how, you know, he, he couldn't minister to them a physical need and minister their physical need, but he said he sat down and he taught them. And so, and so a lot of times it's ministering to the the spirit and the heart of a person and he could recognize all the needs and feed them at that moment and seeing the healing they needed but it actually says in mark six thirty four, it said he sat down and he taught them many things mm -hmm. and so i think we have to make sure that that we keep the word um, pouring into our lives mm -hmm. the word pouring into our lives revelation pouring into our lives because it's in that that we ultimately see life change I, I just keep thinking of the road to Aramaeus, that walk where mm -hmm. the apostles just get this amazing download from yeah. the source Amen. that they just never would have gotten on their own revelation, understanding. And I'm, I'm excited for this. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yeah. So. <clears throat> well, first and foremost, I believe the reason they were there is because they followed, they mm. walked after him. And I know in praying about this new year, I know the one thing that the Lord has shown me is there's got to be a progression. There's got to be a walking, and it has to be intentional. Um, I love that in Genesis when <laughs> Abraham was 99. He was 99. You think he could retire and, like, lay back and not have to do anything. But God spoke to him and said, walk before me. Walk yeah, before me and be blameless. And I that has been standing out to me more than anything because what he's saying is, what you've done has been good, but now I need you to walk before me. I need you to dream. I need you to change because there's some things I'm going to pour into mm. you. Yeah. So I love that story of Jesus feeding them and feeding them. 
um, their physical, but also giving them the word. But again, we have to be intentional this year if we're going to walk out what God wants to do in our lives, which is mm-hmm. progress and advance and, and prosper and see our highest expectation. Because here, here it is, we're not even close to having a high expectation yet. We're not there yet. We've got to ask for more. So he's got to get us to a place where we can ask for more. Yeah. We need Gosh. a new perspective. A new perspective. Well, that's what are it. some, like, training tools? Yeah. Um, well, that's, I mean, that's why we're doing first things first. Yeah. Um, which is? Which <laughs> is? Yeah. First things first is making the priority thing the priority. Um, and that is our relationship with God. You know, that's breaking down everything. And first things first was established out of, Matthew six thirty three, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto us. And like mm-hmm. Pastor Nett just said, is we haven't begun to have an eye, high expectation yet because I think too often we're totally consumed with day-to-day life mm-hmm. and we're just trying to make it through the day. Mm-hmm. But the only way that we need, that, that we're going to come up in our expectation is when we allow the word of God to give us a greater vision for our lives and that's only going to come by walking closer with him that's only going to come by being in prayer that's only going to come you know it's like if you're going to hang out with um if if you want to grow in um excitement or grow in vision you have to hang around a visionary Mm -hmm. if you want to grow in um maybe investing in finances from a natural standpoint, you have to hang out and read after and study after people that were successful at it. If you want to be a better coach, then you study after better coaches. So, so why not follow the creator of the universe? And that's what Pastor Nett was saying with Abraham. Follow me. Mm-hmm. Follow me. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk before me. Follow me. And so we all need to come up to another level and if we're going to have a highest expectation fulfilled, mm-hmm. then we need, we need to grow in our perspective on what God has for our lives. Mm-hmm. Well, and first things first is basically turning to him first thing in the morning. Um, it's getting all your priorities in place in order to have a proper perspective on things. Because if we hit the road running, which is what most moms do, And what I mean by hit the road running is like as soon as you get your feet out of the bed, you've got mom, 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 mom. And so it's easy. (laughs) I hear it's I hear it's something. (laughs) Oh, it's something. So I mean it's so important and so important to get with him before anything else. Because it really does put things into perspective because the things on your list will always seem greater. But when you put it in perspective, it, it, you put him in the front and everything else behind, and it makes more sense. So the impossible, the list of things that you have become possible. So, um, yeah, it's just putting things in perspective in order to see the possibilities of what God wants to do. So. And I, that's why I love January. I really fresh. love Oh fresh. my gosh. New beginnings, fresh starts. <laughs> and my birthday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I knew there was something supernatural. That's about it. it. Um, last year was the first year my wife and I really committed to like the, the first things first, starting January with the fasting, the prayer, like how we open up this house to like kind of like let's get the year started right. Yeah. Right. And it's just like your day. Get your day started right. right. And let's start this year off right. Right. And there was so much blessing in 2023. Right. Like there was so much. Cause I think this house really got in line for it. Like yeah. spiritually, mentally, just physically, everyone dialed in in Very this great. moment that we have right now again yeah. in 2024, yeah. which is just, Oh, so well, excited. You know, it's, you know, part of who we are as a church and, and how we're going to accomplish making winners in life is the experience. It's the equipping and then it's the engaging. It's having the experience with God. But if you don't set yourself apart mm-hmm. to receive, you're not going to have the experience that will take you to the next level. Yeah. In order for Moses to go to the next level, he had to turn aside. Right. That burning, that bush was burning, but it wasn't until he turned aside that God spoke. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's in the experience, but it's the equipping. And so us, by us establishing first things first, this is a tool to equip our congregation for the days ahead yeah. is to prepare us for the days ahead. All that God has for us, the direction and the wisdom that he wants to give us. 
And so that's why first things first is so important. And we do the first things first with prayer at 633 to 733, Mm -hmm. whether you come to the church or whether you do it at home. It's reading the chapter, reading a chapter throughout the whole year. And then we'll also have a a conference and we'll talk about that more in a moment. But I know it'll put something on your heart, um, you know, for this new year um, about what God wants to do. Well, just he wants to download more, obviously. Um, And the same thing with Abraham that he told him to go, to leave his family, to go to a place that I'll show you. And that word and even walk before me is a word of of, um, submission. So January always is kind of like a fresh submission, fresh yielding time. And I know the Lord showed me this year or this past year about when I'm in submission, I can hear him. He said, when you're in submission, you can hear my voice. That's good. Mm -hmm. And so there's some things he really does want to to download into us um, to take us to another level. So, yeah, I mean, because this year, um, as we've gotten the word from Dr. Savell, it is a year of progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion and seeing our highest expectation fulfilled. But it'll be a process. It's not going to happen automatically. It's not going to put in the work. Yeah. When I think that's such a huge thing. Like, not this isn't a a condemnation statement, but, like, if you're not getting into the house during that prayer time for 6 or 7.30, I know it doesn't make sense for everybody, but there is a special anointing during that time. Mm -hmm. When you're with people who are in prayer and you have that presence, it's... Something more, like, you know, trying to pray at your house, it's great if that's what you can do. But being here, if you can, yeah. it's amazing. It's it so yeah. worth the time. And that, is. that dedication it's to say, dedication. I'm going to sacrifice mm-hmm. some sleep, yeah. some drive time, yeah. some coffee time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it worth, it's, yeah. So, it's such a worth it thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's not a works of earning progression mm-hmm. or advancement. It's, it's really putting yourself in a position mm-hmm. to go higher. Sure. It's, it's like, it's that turning aside. Mm -hmm. It's that turning aside so you can gain a new perspective. Oh, I didn't see things that way, God. What do you have for my life this year? And when we make, we are intentional Mm -hmm. about setting aside to hear from him, he will speak. Absolutely. You know, so so often we just want God to just to, to speak through all the noise, speak through all the disappointment, (laughs) just speak all this. And and the thing is, is no, he, he's, he's like, come, you know, come along with me, come Mm -hmm. follow me. You know, get get away with me. Make, make me the priority. Amen. And he will add all these other things into us. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, it's not legalism. It's leveling up. It's awesome. Yeah. Hey, sorry. <laughs> Getting all the chills about what we're doing this January. <laughs> this is so fun. I can't wait. I, this, I can't wait for these first Fridays to start happening every first Friday. It's going to be such good stuff. Yeah. Um, towards the end of last year, <clears throat> This isn't a, you started preaching with this tone of urgency. Mm-hmm. Like there was this, like every message was like, if you're not listening to this message, it could be the most important message to listen to. Right. Strategic. It was super like just laser focused of like, I need you all to be quiet. We're not playing church. You said it a couple of times and I was always like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> calling us out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I apologize if I was, I'm putting my toys away right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cleaning my room. Yeah. I am on this, sir. I apologize. Yeah. Um, but I love the fact that there was that, like mm-hmm. there is a call, like you're saying a separation. Like yeah. if we're not taking it seriously, what are we doing? Right. Yeah. And I, I feel like that kind of theme really solidified the end of last year. And it started this beginning of this yeah. year. And like just kind of what was that thought process behind that? Um, I, I would say the thought process it really, man, um, it's, been a, it's been just a progression through the year. Um, I mean, I, I can actually say it probably began more um, in May. Um, you know, talking about we did summer revival nights, mm-hmm. which has moved over into Wednesday Holy Ghost nights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and... Just what the Lord kept saying through me, and each week, uh, de- kind of defining what revival is, because we can have all these different mindsets of what revival is, um, and what we can, and we'll boil revival down to an emotional service, right. in not realizing it should be about a coming alive, mm. and and this is what the Lord told me, and there was several things He told me, but what stuck out through it all was that revival is a season of separation. And so people have a mindset, oh, it was warm revival because everyone was falling out and laughing. But no, revival can be 
just revelation came forth. Mm-hmm. A word of knowledge came forth. A, a, a holy hush, so to speak, went, over, went, went across the crowd, and God was speaking to individual hearts. Amen. So we, 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 I think we kind of hinder ourselves if we put revival into this one class of things, but ultimately revival to me, and this is what he spoke through that season, was it's a season of separation. Mm-hmm. It is a disconnecting from one thing and connecting to another thing. Mm-hmm. It is a, uh, it, it is that coming away. Mm-hmm. It is that, God, you have something more for me. And where I'm at in my life right now, maybe the relationships I have, the people that are surrounding me, they can't take me there. Mm-hmm. It's a chosen position. Even Paul said I, he called himself a bond servant, and what that actually means is a separated servant. It's a ch- I've, I'm choosing to be here. I'm choosing to be right by your side. That's good. Yeah. I don't want to miss a thing. No, basically, no. it's the, it, that's exactly what that means. It's like I'm. I don't want to miss a thing. Yeah. Mm. It's like a slave by choice. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> that's it. That's exactly it's, what a bond servant and that, is. And that's what it is. It's like you. You're free to go. Mm-mm, I don't want to like, go anywhere. I, I, I don't. You have go the anywhere. words of life. Where would I go? Yeah. And that's how we have to. Treat, I believe, this year, 2024, like you have the words. I don't want to go unless your presence goes with me. Right. I've tried this in my own. I've tried this, mm-hmm. well, part with you and part with myself. Yeah. But this year is, is going to have to be totally different. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really, that's the urgency, I guess, that was coming across is because because we haven't lived in this time before. Correct. And and if we just treat our lives as same old, same old, then that's all we'll ever get. But we're in a season that as a nation, as a world, globally. We haven't walked this way we, before. We haven't walked this way before. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess that kind of reminds us of some things the Lord gave us years ago mm-hmm. based on Joshua. You know, Joshua 3. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, Keep the Ark of the Covenant out in front of you. That's it. Um, you know, keep it about, uh, I think it was about a, about a quarter of a mile or a half a mile in front of you. And he goes, you know, because you haven't been this way before. Mm. And so that lets us know is we got to keep him out in front of us. Right. And I think in that, that's like he says, the process that we're going to see the progressing. Right. We're going to see the advancing. Mm-hmm. We will see the promotion. And then our highest expectation being fulfilled. But, yeah. I feel like in January you get so inspired to, like, make new habits and do things that are different, and then it kind of, like, fades off right. through the months. Like, what can you do? <laughs> you know, you, like, you have a month of, like, <laughs> eating really, really good, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, yeah, you're gym. like, and then Gym's you kind of so forget about it a little January, bit. Yeah. Yes, it's, tr- it's true. It's February it 1st, like, where'd everyone go? Exactly. <laughs> that's, yes. And so that's my point is, like, what can you do throughout the year to keep that, vision in front of you because you have to do something or else it will fade off it will you'll forget about it or you'll it'll just get put on the back burner because you get used to you know what I mean life happens and you get back into it right so there's something like you have to keep it in front of you even February 1st and beyond yeah (laughs) okay (laughs) got that Dan new revelation but I'm I'm receiving it I, I would say the first thing is you have to make a quality decision and, uh, you know, you say, oh, well, that's, yeah. Well, didn't I make a quality decision on January 1st, mm-hmm. you know, to start whatever I'm doing? Well, a quality decision, and this is what I learned from Dr. Savell, is a quality decision is a decision of no return. Wow. It's, I'm not going back there. That's good. And, you know, and, and whether if it's not, if a relationship with God hasn't become a habit mm. or a consistent thing in your life, then put things in your car, put things, put reminders on your phone, right. put, That's a good I one. mean, part of the separation is, is I've got to disconnect, like disconnect from some things. Maybe there's some apps you need to take off the, your phone. I know. Maybe there is, mm. um, <laughs> may, maybe, maybe there is some th- apps you need to put on your phone. Yeah. yeah. That's um, true. Maybe there's <laughs> alarms you need to set. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, maybe you need to set an alarm for how much Netflix you're watching. And 
you know, but you have to, it, it's a quality decision of saying, you know what, I'm going to disconnect from this and I'm going to connect with this. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, and other than that is the enemy's always going to try to steal the word. Always. And he's always going to try to talk you out of it right. or come again. Oh, this isn't working. What's, what's the point? No, th- there, there is a point. And so don't give up. Don't give up. Right before. Start back up again. Y- yes. You see, you see the progression, you know, get back up again. Don't make a cheat meal, a cheat week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 That's, that's cheat month. <laughs> cheat yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Next quarter. Next you'll see me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is a part of that also too, is I think it becomes familiar. We make, like we make these things that we do comfortable or familiar. They get familiar and they don't become significant anymore. They become yeah. mundane. Yeah. I have that struggle. I mean, it's phrased that way. Like I'll have a really great goal. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll, you know, and then it becomes just like, a, oh yeah. It, you know, it loses the the significance it had when I first thought well, because about Because you it. lose the passion. It's right. And the excitement yeah. of yeah. it. Yeah. And you right. lose the passion because you lose the why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. There you know, is. Um, so you the why. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why am you know, I doing this? A, yeah. I mean, you can know what you're called to do. Um, you can know you have a call in your life. And if, if you don't establish the why, then disappointments will keep you from it. Mm-hmm. But if you make the why, why am I doing this? One, because, you know, I, I believe this is the direction for my life. Why? Because this is the part, this is the church I'm in, and this is the direction that we're going as a church that's going to equip me. That's right. The why is I'll never be disappointed if I make him my priority in my life. Amen. And, and it, things are going to happen. Uh, things are, I mean, life is always yeah. going to happen. No doubt. And you always have to go no back doubt. to, I know what God said at the beginning of the year. And they're, I mean, that's why he says to walk it out. You, I mean, it's, you know, they walked out of Egypt, you know, mm-hmm. and they kept walking and they kept walking and they kept walking. Um, so it is a process. So, I mean, you have to celebrate, you know, the promises. God said he's going to do this, but this happened. So does that mean he changed his mind? No, he didn't change his mind. It's still going to happen. And that's where faith and trust come in in order to walk through that process of what is he doing through this? You know, he didn't allow this horrible thing to happen because life just happens. We live, we live in a, in a, in a broken world and system and society. So, um, but that's where faith and trust come in. And, and you'll go deeper in your relationship with him. If you trust the process, walk it out. He's, he's going to get you to the other side. Yeah. I think you said it in one of your, I, I can't remember, but I know you said we were born for significance, but born again for influence. That's it. Mm-hmm. And that kind of that, that thought process really struck out in terms of like what, what you're referring to here. Like, like what is your purpose? Like that godly anointing that's been put in your life. Like that's a significance there you know, to influence your community, your home, your whatever that is. And more than anything in this time and season that we're in, the world is your, the world, your family, your friends, your coworkers are watching Mm -hmm. because everything is out front. (laughs) Nothing is hidden anymore. Everything is out front. Everything's on the media, social media, everything is, I mean, and so Mm -hmm. they want to know what is your reaction to everything that's going on. And so, um, I know that that's the heart of God. That's why he's calling us to a higher level yeah. is because people are going to be watching and they need to know there's a piece about us. They know they need to look at us and go, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. What is it? What is it? Why isn't yeah. she coming unraveled? Yeah. Why is she still in peace? Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and I think that's what those six points that talked about on anniversary service, mm-hmm. you know, about having the deep commitment to God and this is what we saw in the New Testament church and caused the New Testament church to really change the world. Mm-hmm. It was that deep commitment with God. It was that devotion to the word. It was the firm reliance on the Holy Spirit. It was a love and um, for each other. And we saw that in their unity and their generosity. <coughs> and then they had this, um, just this compelling desire to reach the lost. Mm-hmm. And it, we have to get filled up and we need to be examples. Um, I guess what was really big in, in my heart to this first, um, and I woke up this in, in my heart this morning, you know, for this first, uh, first uh, Friday in this year on this podcast, what Jesus communicated in Matthew chapter 7, the very end of it, and he talks about two people. 
he talks about the foolish man and he talked about the wise man and he talked about the wise man built his house upon the rock and it said the foolish man built his house upon the sand Mm -hmm. we know in that story that both of them had storms and when i say this i know storms are going to come this year we're going to see things happen within our nation but we have to ask ourselves are we going to be the wise are we going to be the foolish and the difference between both of them because both of them experienced the same storms the difference is the man that built his house upon the rock was a man that heard the word and did the word mm-hmm. and the one that uh the one that's fell because of the sand the difference was is he just heard the word so both of them heard the word so for these next for the rest of this month and throughout the year first things first it's like hey i'm in the word i'm coming on wednesday nights and i come in sunday mornings god doing amazing things well, it's, it's not first things first isn't just about, hey, I'm, I'm doing this and, and uh, sowing this time. No, mm-hmm. it's I'm putting myself in a position to not just be in the word, but I'm going to allow the word to change me to where I do the word. Mm-hmm. And I believe that's kind of what just Pastor Annette said, where we become the examples of the people that we can say, hey, come stand, come stand and come and get in my house. Right. Come, come, come along and, and get in my house because my life is built upon a rock. Amen. And the next thing you know, and that that's, and that's where the influence comes in. And there has to be something different from the rest of the world in the church. Yes. That's and true. it's going to have to come down to our pursuits, mm-hmm. priorities, yeah. and what our life is founded on. That's good. I like that. So what is, what's this, um, this conference that we're doing? Well, come and this was put in my heart, um, back in September and, um, you know, asking Dr. Savell and I've been wanting to do it for a period of time. It just never worked out with the schedule because a lot of times his, as soon as they would get back from preparing, um, you know, from the, uh, the new year, um, you know, Dr. Savell would hit the ground running. And so I came to him and, and I said, you know, Dr. Savell, I would love for us to do a conference together. Um, mm-hmm. as a church and um, and for first things first conference and so you know we're going through these first uh, 21 days mm-hmm. you know with uh, prayer in the mornings or prayer whenever you're able to um, in the word and on the 21st he ministers uh, here in a couple weeks he'll be ministering on Sunday morning the 21st and then starting that night um, from Sunday night Monday night Tuesday night and Wednesday night um, it'll be him and myself and maybe other people that he might bring in. I'm not sure yet, um, but I'm telling you, it, it's going to be an amazing time. And I believe it's we're going to have a move of God. Mm-hmm. I believe great things are going to come out of it, and it's going to set the course for the rest of 2024. Yes. And we're excited for it. And I'm telling you, mark your calendars now for it. Mm. Um, make an investment in the rest of this year um, during this time that we have each day and maybe you haven't started yet but you can start today start mm-hmm. start start uh, you know, January 5th or whatever day you're watching this start that day whatever it <coughs> might be and I'm telling you it's gonna go we're gonna go to another level this next year amen, amen. I'm excited it's exciting I know I'm like oh <laughs> we doing it what are we doing are you huh? feeling pumped <laughs> like gym memberships all around <laughs> well <laughs> like, don't I mean, get crazy pump the brakes all right I get it <laughs> This has been, I think, exactly what we wanted the first Friday is to kind of, like, you guys sharing your heart for things, like the message. Normally we say with every podcast, I don't know if you're familiar, we <laughs> finish this with what makes a winner in life, but I'm pretty sure you gave us a fantastic <laughs> blueprint on what Amen. to step forward into yeah. this year. And and part of that is we're going to be putting all the resources for the first things first, the the reading materials, the, the, the Bible reading um, schedule the church meeting schedule, all the resources that go along with the first thing first will be linked in the show notes and they'll be readily available on the website Um, because we want to make sure you guys have every ounce of information to be successful in this. Continue being a winner. Continue. That's it. Uh, I, this is going to be a really good year. Amen. I agree. I agree. I, I, the, the amount of expectation I had last year is nothing compared to what I have now. Right. It's so much like, Oh, going higher. So it's, you guys got to get on this train, okay? It's not just in this room. It's readily available for all of you. Just grab it. Well, thank y'all so much for joining us. And we will see y'all next week for more winning conversations. Bye. Forgive him, Jesus. <laughs>